we've had so much to talk about. Christine and, and uh, the transportation system is so exciting. And opening one of the firehouses this weekend all done, that's neat. So it's just been a great meeting, and thank you very much for everything you've all done. You too, Doug. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Um, when Doug? you guys get finished, then I need to... Go ahead, bud. Okay, on the... Um, there's one last thing, and I'm not sure I gave Mary, you and Paul, a copy of this uh, co-op we're getting back, uh, this excess co-op. It's, it's $1.9 million. Let me give you the, the okay. We got it one other time. It was in 2012, and it was like 725000 But we are required by law, and I'm giving you all that information, uh, that we have to put it in our rainy day fund. So, Paul, that gets us over $2 million in our rainy day fund. That's fantastic. So, I'll give you that. It supposedly went in today. Looks good. Actually, it's coming in on Friday. Pardon me? Actually, it's coming in on Friday. Oh, is it coming in on Friday? Okay. Thank you. That's right, Cheryl? Yeah. 28. Cheryl does that for us. She should be putting that money into our rainy day class. Yeah, the so. library got about as much as we did. Oh, is that right? 1.7. I find that absurd. Huh? No, yeah, yeah. I have, uh, so, can you talk a little bit about it? So, what this is was legislation that uh, just passed um, before the state would withhold um, excess COET. So, they would calculate your distribution and then they would actually hold those funds <coughs> into their account up to 150%. So, they've been holding that money back. So their account balance has been growing. So what they've done this year is they enacted legislation for one-time release of the co-op money that the state held through the 2014 balance. So over 450 some odd million dollars was distributed throughout the state for those units who um, collect income tax. They also made a change that they're no longer gonna be holding an additional 50% reserve. They've um, reduced that down to 15%. So I think we should expect to receive more of your income tax dollars um, going forward. Um, because you, you do not have transportation, you um, are required to put in your rainy day fund. You don't have the restrictions that the cities and towns do. So they're required to spend 75% of their distribution on transportation infrastructure. The other 25% they're able to use as needed. Because that's not an obligation of the township, um, we're required to spend our rainy day fund. When we do make expenditures from that, we have to go through the additional appropriation process and kind of go through like you would normally but you're really just um, limited to normal additional appropriation on your rainy day fund. So this is actually your funds that you should have been receiving had the state not held such a large reserve dating back so many years. Mm -hmm. So now that income and cash will come in and I think it's, it's a good time. You know, we've been using some funds for the fire project so it really works out well and provides you some opportunity if you choose to use it for other purposes. Thank you, Angie. Thanks, good information. Uh, not to ride on this $1.9 million, but I do want to make you aware that it was over at the Parks Department a couple weeks ago. What? We, Angie and I talked about this when we heard it was first coming in. I'm thinking, I don't know, the park's going to want part of this. <laughs> well, I'm not, nobody's asked for any money. I just want to let you know what the Parks Department has done. Back in February, when we had the uh, chili supper. Right which was a, a, a wonderful event, well attended, right. I thought. Uh, the number one complaint was, um, and it was not from any certain, demo, it was from all demographics, was walking a quarter mile from the parking lot to the building. Yeah. Uh, the parks have, it was cold. have engaged in a, so the, the revenue potential of the Monon Center is maxed out. The amount of space they have versus the amount of re revenue they can generate is maxed. They have hired uh, American Structure Point to do a feasibility study on a land parking garage and building expansion study. That's all that's been done. Yeah. You get over there during peak hours and it's amazing. There's, there's no place. There's nowhere to park. So I think the, and, and this was sponsored and brought up by our board appointee, Jim Garrison, has spearheaded this. 
Uh, and I think the, the anticipation is that a, a garage structure that attaches to the building so people can park and walk into the building. Oh, that's great. Also with added space to generate more revenue, which on the surface all sounds good to me. We'll see what, what the feasibility study has. I think it's supposed to come back late July or August. I'm not really sure. But that's what's happening. Playground. I try by it just about every day thinking, wow, this just gets better and better. It's not like the old playgrounds or um, the playgrounds of yore. Remember when they just swing and slides? Uh, it looks like you, we could have a good time there. That project is anticipated to be completed June 17th. That's not too far off, is it? And then the last phase of that whole, that side of the whole site is just rebuilding the road and adding some more trails. That's my parks update since Mark Westermeyer's <laughs> by himself in Utah with nothing but an emergency rescue me phone. Oh, really? Yeah, by himself. Trekking through the mountains yep. and stuff. No kidding. Wow. Anything else? Just a reminder about um, the uh, open house at Station 43, which is 106, and Keystone um, from 1 to 4 on Saturday. The only thing is at 1.30, we're going to make a few comments, and other than that, people can come and go as they please. Oh, I have one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. uh, FDIC. So my office building is right on the circle. Mm -hmm. And last week was the most busy and vibrant I have seen in Indianapolis since the Super Bowl. And it was, I, was, I worked late on a Thursday night. And I just think, and it's a testament to the firemen because they really bring a whole different yeah. crowd than some of our other ridiculous expos do. Um, some we don't really want to know about. <laughs> well, I just mean, I'm not anyone in particular, but some of the yeah. more conventional no, center right. comic cons. I mean, it's just yeah. a different a different, you know, they shop, they spend, they're polite, they're kind. Mm -hmm. um, they're professional. They're very professional. I just, I can't speak highly enough about it. Did well, you do the ninja thing down there? No, but I, I can, my office looks right over it. So <laughs> they start at 2 a.m. tonight, or 9 a.m., 9 p.m. tonight. Wow. <laughs> well, they were holding one of the drills or, or training out here on Fourth Avenue, and isn't it Fourth where they were, all the engines were out and they were doing yeah. some of the training oh yeah oh Third uh, Avenue right uh, third. oh Third, third Avenue, Avenue. I yeah. Get, yeah. That yeah they did some of those uh, things from from right. the FDIC up here yeah yes Monday and Tuesday yeah that's great and the general feedback from the because I on some committees downtown and all the hotels just love it i mean they just they wish they could have this conference every week every yeah i bet every week oh yeah, yeah okay. right money 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 anyway anything else yeah. motion to adjourn what well, are there any announcements Doug? no okay just that one i, I move, move to adjourn. go ahead mary i'll second i move that we adjourn second all those in favor aye aye adjourned it. Seven. This is simple.